Hi kids, welcome to chapter 10, lesson one. Uh, I know that you did the lab, the initial lab for chapter 10 already, uh, but chapter 10, the focus of chapter 10 is volume and surface area, so that's what we'll be covering. And today we're gonna talk about volume of rectangular prisms. So you might be wondering what is a prism? So that's what we're gonna talk about first. Uh, also, for this uh, chapter, I really suggest that you use grid paper for your note page. Uh, don't have to, but uh, since we'll be talking a lot about or drawing figures and, and uh, the grid paper just makes it easier to do that. I know yesterday you also started to explore volume already with blocks. You were building different figures with a different length, width, and height. So we'll be talking about uh, those ideas today as well. Okay, let's get started. A prism. Here is the definition of a prism. So uh, over here, uh, follow um, the directions to draw. We're going to make a drawing of a prism. So connect a diagonal on one on across one box like that. Now make a line that goes across three full squares. So one, two, three. And do that again from the bottom of that diagonal line. One, two, three. And then connect that diagonal. So there is the top of our prism. From this corner come down two squares. From this corner come down two squares. And from this corner come down one, two. Connect the bottom, connect the side, and now we have a box. Now I'm going to draw in some more lines that you couldn't see. If you could see through the box, you would see also see these lines. So make these dashed. So this should be a dashed line. Dashed diagonal line here, and another one coming down, and another one coming across. And again, those are lines that we can't see if it was a box, but if we could look through it, then we would see those lines. So this is an example of a prism. It's a 3D figure with parallel and identical bases. So let's write that over here. Is a 3D figure with uh, parallel and identical bases. So that is the definition of a prism. 3D figure with parallel and identical bases. Now let me show you some examples. Um, today we're going to be looking at rectangular prisms which are boxes. So here is an example of a rectangular prism and that pink side is the exact same as this side. Those are identical and they're parallel. If I extend them in all directions they're never going to touch. I also could have looked at it like this and called this two identical bases or like this and used this base and this base is identical. But I figured um, I set it down on the ground like this. So here's a base, here's a base. They're parallel and they're never going to touch. And they're identical. Exact same base. Here is another example of a prism. Not a rectangular prism, but the base is a triangle. So that base is identical to this base and they are parallel. They're never going to touch. Okay, if I extend them in all directions, never going to touch. So this is an example of a triangular prism. Here's another example. Hexagon. Hexagon. They're parallel. They're identical. Never going to touch if I extend them. This is a hexagonal prism. So as you can see, prisms come 
You can have any kind of prism you want as long as the faces or the it's got parallel and identical bases. So let's highlight that. That's the big idea with a prism. So parallel and identical bases. So in our example, those faces are parallel and identical. They're never going to touch if I extend them in all directions. Okay, so this lesson is only talking about rectangular prisms, which are boxes. Okay, it's some kind of a box. And volume, the official definition of volume, which I know you looked at uh, in the lab already a little bit, but the volume is the amount of space inside a 3D figure. It's measured in cubic units or units cubed. This is what you were doing in the lab. This is an example of volume. How much, how many, the space measured inside this box in cubes. This is the idea of volume. So let's write that down. Volume. Volume is the amount of space the amount of space inside a 3D figure and measured in Uh, cubic units okay and again cubic units those can be uh, different measures like cubic inches cubic feet cubic meters uh, cubic millimeters and another way to show that is units cubed with an exponent of three Area is dealing with units squared. Cubic units are units cubed, or to the third power is a shortcut. And again, we would say units cubed. All right, so let's highlight volume. This is the big idea today. Volume of a rectangular prism or a box, and it's always in cubic units you can shortcut it with the units to the third power, and the way you say that is cubed. Okay, it's the amount of space inside of a 3D figure. Okay, so now, which a lot of you knew this or discovered this in the lab, the formula for volume of a rectangular prism. And I'm going to be a stickler on demanding that you write down when you're starting with problems you're writing down volume you're writing down the formula for volume should be doing that for formula for anything whether it's area volume always start by writing down the formula so the volume formula and I'm just gonna say rectangular prism This formula, volume formula is different for different prisms. So this volume formula is only for a box, a rectangular prism. And here is the formula. Volume is length times width times height. So three variables, L, W, and H, length times width times height, or Another way that you'll see this formula written is volume equals a capital B times the height. Now, this capital B represents the area of the base. So let's explain that. If I'm looking at this rectangular prism, the area of the base, and I would label these, this would be the length 
The height is how tall it is, and then this dimension would be the width. Length, width, and height. The area of the base is length times width. So that this part right here is the same as this capital B. Okay, L times W, sometimes you'll see it as the area of the base. That's still length times width. I like this one better. Um, most sixth graders like this formula better. Length times width times height. But just know if you see this, it's the same thing where this capital B is the length times the width. Okay, so let's look at an example. Find the volume. Find the volume when you have a rectangular prism with a length of 6, a width of 3 and 1 fourth, and a height of 12 and a half. And we'll say we don't know the units, we'll just leave them as units. Um, okay, today some of your problems are this, find the volume, it gives you a length, a width, and a height. And you, this is how you should be showing your work. Like I mentioned before, you are always starting with the formula. So volume equals length, times width, times height. Write it down. Cements that in your brain. Next, I'm going to show the work. So formula, you're going to hear me say this as, as well throughout this chapter. Whoops. Formula. Formula work units is what you're going to hear me saying a lot in class. Start with the formula. Length times width times height. Now I'm going to plug in the amounts. My length is 6 times my width is 3 and 1 fourth. I'm going to change this into a decimal so I can use my calculator. If you don't know the common 1 fourth decimal, divide it on your calculator. 1 divided by 4, it's going to give you 0.25. So 3 and 1 fourth is, so 6 times 3.25 times the height, 12 and a half. Again, the, the, I'm going to change it to decimal, which is 12.5. So now I'm multiplying 6 times 3.25 times 12.5, changing it to decimal so that I can use my calculator. I type that into my calculator, 6 times 3.25 times 12.5, and I get 243.5. Units cubed. So formula, then work, then units. Okay, this is what you're going to hear me saying throughout this chapter. Formula, work, units. Always start with the formula. So for a lot of your problems today, this is what your work should look like. Formula, then you're showing the work and then you're writing your answer with the units. Formula, work, units. Okay, the other example we're going... Before I do the, other, the last example, hidden treasure for today. Uh, the hidden treasure for today is to look up, uh, explain and give an example of the commutative property. Again, uh, I'll say that again, the commutative property. And write that on the back of your note page or at the bottom. Uh, the Here's how you spell commutative. It's C-O-M-M-U-T-A-T-I-V-E. Commutative property. Explain it and give an example. Uh, you can look it up in your glossary. You can Google search it. Um, but that's today's hidden treasure. Okay, one more example. So here we were finding straight volume. Find volume. You might also sometimes know the volume and not know one of the dimensions. So our last example is this. Find the missing dimension. Okay, we know the volume in this example. We don't know the width. So I'm going to write down in this example, we know the volume already. It's 
37.5 inches cubed. We know the length. The length in this example is 2.5 inches. We know the height, or I'm, I'm going to do the width. We don't know the width. Width is a question mark. And the height is... The height is three and three fourths inches. So it's a similar problem, except now we know the volume, we don't know the width. Okay. The good news, though, is we're going to use the exact same formula to to figure this out. Uh, so I'm again, I'm starting with the volume formula. Volume equals length times width times height. Then I'm going to plug in the amounts that I know. This time I know the volume is 37.5, so I'm going to replace this V with 37.5. I know the length is 2.5. I don't know the width, so I'm going to leave that W, and I know that the height is 3 and 3 fourths. Again, I'm going to change this into a decimal so I can use a calculator. 3 divided by 4 is 0.75, so 3 and 3 fourths as a decimal equivalent is 3.75. So now, after I substituted the amounts into the formula, again, always start with the formula. Now, on this side of the equation, 2.5 times 3.75, I'm going to multiply those together on my calculator and get an amount and then I'm going to multiply that times W. So 2.5 times 3.75. Calculator that and you will get 9.375. So that's 2.5 times 3.75. That's being times W. And over here we still have 37.5. So all I did right here is I multiplied 2.5 times 3.75, I got 9.375 times W, and now this is a one-step equation. Here's my variable. It's being multiplied by 9.375. I want to do the inverse to both sides of the equation. What's the inverse of being multiplied by 9.375? That is divide by 9.375. But again, I've got to show that I'm doing that to both sides of the equation. Super important you're showing that step right there. Otherwise, if you don't show that you're doing that to both sides, your equation is not going to stay balanced. Type in your calculator, 37.5 divided by 9.375, and you get 4. The unit of the width are, is in inches. So inches, and on this side, when you divide 9.375 by itself, turns into 1. 1 times W is just W. So my answer for the width is it's 4 inches. So again, formula, work, and units. Important you're following that step that process. Formula, work, units. And let's see, I'm going to get a different color here. So if you're finding the missing dimension, this is what your work should look like. Just as when you're finding the volume, you're starting with the formula. You're always writing down the formula first, plugging in the amounts that you know, and then solving for what you don't know, and making sure your answer has units. So, huge idea today, find volume, find the missing dimension, but the process is real similar. Start with the formula, show the work, and units. Formula work units, formula work units. Make sure you're writing down all three. All right, that wraps up lesson one. I'll see you soon for lesson two.